In this section, we will use the extrude along path command to quickly create another rail. Then we will use the deform tool to reshape the object to create an S-shaped curved rail. Switch to a front view. Activate the circle tool in the basic palette. Click once in the drawing area to start the circle and move the cursor to the right. Tap into the floating data bar, enter 0.1 for the length, and press enter or return twice to create the circle. Next, switch to screen plane in the plane menu in the view bar. Activate the line tool in the basic palette. Click once in the drawing area to start the line and move the cursor to the right. Tap into the floating data bar, enter 6.5 for the length, and press enter or return twice to complete the line. Select both the circle and the line, go to Model, Extrude Along Path, using the previous and next buttons, make sure the line is highlighted in red, and click OK. Note the rail object will be placed on the default layer plane. This is because the path object was created on screen plane. Click and drag the rail up above the concrete base of the skate park. Activate the Deform tool in the 3D Modeling tool set. We want to bend a portion of this rail, so we need to enable the Bend Solid and Finite Length modes in the toolbar. This will allow us to set the length of the bend spine. Move the cursor over the rail. The ends will highlight in red. Click once to select the object. Move the cursor over the midpoint of the right end of the rail. Wait a few seconds to acquire a smart point. Move the cursor to the left along the horizontal extension line, about a quarter of the way across the rail. Click once, then move the cursor back to the right end of the rail. Click one more time to set the length of the bend spine. Move the cursor up, you will see a preview of the bend. When the bend angle is about 30 degrees, click one more time to complete the operation. Now, with the deform tool still active, Click on the rail, and then acquire a smart point at the midpoint of the left end of the rail. Move the cursor to the right along the horizontal extension line until it is slightly to the left of the start of the first bend. Click once and move the cursor to the left about halfway to the left end. Click again to set the bend spine length. Move the cursor up until the bend angle is about negative 40 degrees and click once to complete the operation. Finally, let's bend the left end of the rail down. With the deform tool still active, click once on the rail, move the cursor about three quarters the way across the remaining straight segment of the rail, click once. Move the cursor back to the left and click on the midpoint of the left end of the rail to set the bend spine. Now, move the cursor down until the bend angle is about 80 degrees, and click once more to complete the operation. Next, we will use the extrude command and the move by points tool to create three posts for this rail. Then we will adjust the height of the posts and combine the objects using the add solids command. Switch to a top plan view. If needed, move the rail over top of the lower level of the skate park. Activate the circle tool and draw a circle with a length of 0.1. With the circle selected, extrude the circle by going to Model Extrude. Set the extrusion to 1.75 and center the extrude under the rail. Switch to a front view and move the post up so that the bottom of the post is snapped to the concrete base of the skate park and is below the left curve of the rail. Now drag the rail down and snap it to the top of the post. Switch to a top plan view to confirm the post is still under the rail, and then switch back to a front view. With the post still selected, move the middle top blue control point up so that the top of the post is inside the rail. Then activate the Move by Points tool in the basic palette. Enable the Distribute and Object Retention modes in the toolbar, and set the number of duplicates to 2. Make sure the post is still selected and click once on the center of the base of the post. Move the cursor to the right until the length field in the floating data bar is about four and click once to place the duplicates. Now let's adjust the height of the other posts. 
select the middle post, click the top middle blue control point of the post, and move the cursor down. Once the top of the post is within the rail, click again to adjust the height. Repeat the action for the other post. Switch to a top plan view and confirm that all posts are under the rail. Adjust the position of the posts if needed. Select the rail and the three posts. Go to Model, Add Solids to combine the objects into one solid addition. Finally, using the Set Working Plane tool and the Hemisphere tool, we will add rounded ends to the rail. Switch to a left isometric view and zoom in on the left end of the rail. Activate the Set Working Plane tool in the 3D Modeling Toolset. Enable the second mode, Planar Face mode. Move the cursor over the end of the rail. It will highlight in blue, and the Working Plane preview will align with this plane. Click once to set the Working Plane. Now, activate the Hemisphere tool in the 3D Modeling Toolset. Enable the second mode, Diameter mode. Click once on the left edge of the rail, and then once on the right edge. Repeat this process for the other end of the rail. Next, select the rail and the two hemispheres, and go to Model, Add Solids. Finally, give the completed rail a gray fill color through the Attributes palette, and change its class to Rails in the Object Info palette.